Hey guys, what's up? I have a vlog on the five website development trends that rock 2017, at least according to this article on MSN. Just popped up in my feed, so I figured I'd comment on a few things that they're talking about, give you my two cents. So they said, number one, AngularJS. So AngularJS uh, came out with the new AngularJS 4, uh, it was very different from the previous versions. I remember a couple, uh, a year ago or so, in Angular JS, I think it was in version 2, maybe it was version 3, and I told people, don't put too much time into Angular JS because version, the new version is coming out, which is apparently a total rewrite from the old version, so don't waste your time. So, anyhow, so Angular 4 is out. Uh, yeah, Angular and React JS from Facebook, I, they compete with each other. I think there's slightly different use cases. Again, with all these libraries, React, Angular, whatever, whatever library you pick, whether it be uh, a JavaScript library, whether it be a CSS library, whatever, I say learn on a need to nerd basis, need to nerd basis. You should be aware of them sort of look at what they do, maybe do the equivalent of the hello world with each of them, but don't go crazy because, don't think because something is hot that you have to use it. Just understand what's out there and leverage these libraries, again, when you need to use them. Ah, number two in their list, artificial intelligence, AI. Yes, AI is getting pretty big. You see it all over the place. AI is kind of interesting in that it is, um, it's not necessarily very obvious to people, unless you're a nerd, that AI is starting to creep in everywhere. Like my Google Pixel, I got the Pixel phone, and the biggest part about it for me in terms of its utility is the AI. The AI to me kills it in terms of the Google Assistant. I use it all the time. And AI is huge. It's going to make the uh, dot-com uh, boom and revolution, if you will, look kind of uh, quaint in comparison. Huge changes are coming in terms of our, not just our economies, but our societies because of AI and robotics. I think for the good personally, but yeah, AI is huge. Uh, the AR says right here, Merrill Lynch, huge bank estimates that AI market to rise to 153 billion by the end of 2018. Microsoft's Cortana, Google's Assistant are some of the high level web-based AI adjustments of this age. Um, yeah, so you see, <laughs> they point out in this article, a lot of companies will use AI in their branding and marketing to sort of sell it because it's the hot new thing, AI. It's very important. Um, in fact, with Studio Web, not that I'm trying to market here, but in studio, with Studio Web 4, uh, sometime in six months from now, I plan to implement an AI component into the architecture. Uh, I won't get into the details of what we're going to be doing with it. I don't want to tip my hand, but it's pretty interesting stuff. So yeah, AI, what does AI mean in terms of you as a developer? It means languages of Python. It means uh, Go, no, R, not Go, R I think it is. I always forget. Anyway, just go into Python. I just did a vlog on that. If you want to get to AI. Now, learning Python, the basics of it, the core of it is the beginning of uh, AI programming. Then you have to get into other things as well. Uh, the libraries that uh, and the modules associated with AI. But um, if you're interested in AI, first step is to learn Python. Ah, virtual reality. VR technology is often associated with video games. Although the tech has been around for some time now, its potential is increasingly getting realized by corporate bigwigs. Well, I think virtual reality, AR, augmented reality, and VR, virtual reality, I think that um, I, I don't see it going far beyond the niche. So if I were you, if you were interested in the tech, I would... Uh, not drop everything to get into AR, VR. I think it's a highly specialized thing, meaning it's only going to be used in very specific purposes. Think about it. AI, uh, it's not AI, augmented reality, AR and VR. Problem with that, you got to put these glasses on, which are really encumbering. And so they're going to have to get the glasses something minimal, like a Google Glass. They're not there yet, a few years, a year, a few years away. 
And then you have to question how how often is this stuff going to be used? I think AR, AR and VR are a lot of hype. Kind of like 3D TV. I don't think it's going to be as bad as 3D TV where 3D TV just collapsed. But I think it's going to be highly niche. So, you know, proceed with caution with uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. And number four, Ruby on Rails. I know they mentioned the new features in Ruby on Rails, but I don't know about that. I've seen other reports saying when Ruby on Rails, is, its use is, uh, is dropping. Um, you know, all the hipster coders are moving towards Node.js. So I'm sure Ruby on Rails is a st still a great full stack solution. Although if you follow my vlogs for a bunch of business reasons I, and performance reasons, I suggest you go with PHP Laravel as opposed to Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Uh, number five, this is interesting to me, uh, static website generators. So, uh, yeah, so they got, they mentioned some, uh, some, I guess, modules like Pelican in, yeah, sorry, the camera stopped recording for some reason. All right, I haven't heard about the static website generators, these particular ones like Pelican in Python, and I'm sure there are others. This is kind of funny. So let me tell you what that is. First of all, a static website generator is nothing new. This is something that Perl, one of the old languages of the web, still use quite a bit out there, but it's not something I would learn today. Perl uh, used to do that itself. It used to create static pages. So the way typical dynamic websites work, whether it be Ruby on Rails or PHP Laravel or Java, etc., is that with every time somebody requests a dynamic page, a dynamic page is a page that talks to databases. Every time that page is requested, every time somebody says, show me the shopping cart, what would happen? is that the, uh, the coding, the programming, whether it be PHP, Ruby, Java, C Sharp, Python, whatever, the coding, they would, it would contact the database, pull the records from the database, and display the page dynamically. Dynamically meaning constantly changing. Well, with static website generators, and what Perl used to do, is that they said, well, there's certain pages that don't really need to be generated every single time somebody comes to a site. For instance, maybe you have a website uh, with uh, houses for sale, a, a, a real estate website. How often do you change the number of houses that are for sale? It seems kind of silly that a site like that would constantly go to the database to load up the houses for sale when you may add a new house you know, four or five times a week max. So you may have to update the, the actual page just a few, a few times a week as opposed to every single time somebody hits that page. So with static website generators, what Perl would do, it would basically generate a static page, meaning it would create that HTML page with all the house information in place, to use that example, and stick it in a, in a, particular, in a particular directory. So when somebody would come to visit the site, it would just load the static page, meaning it wouldn't bother the database. You wouldn't have to go to the database to pull the records. How is this significant? Because the most expensive part in terms of CPU and memory requirements and so forth in any website, any dynamic database driven websites operation, the most expensive part in a web app is actually talking to the database. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of uh, CPU power to open that connection. Maybe not once, but if you're doing it you know, thousands of times uh, in a minute, it starts to really, you know, hum the CPU. So by having static pages, it takes hardly any CPU power, so it's just much more efficient. It scales much more, meaning your site can handle much more traffic. That's the whole advantage of a static website generator. It's, uh, it's interesting, I think, though, that it's very rare these days that your website will need to do that. You would have to have a super, super popular website and you would have to, it could only be used in very targeted situations. Like I said, for example, uh, a, a web page or a website that shows a listing of houses for sale. You know, if, the, if that page only has to be refreshed, has, has to be changed, if you will, you know, once a day, that's where a static website generator type of uh, system would make sense, right? Because you just need to update it once a day and it would save a huge amount of server resources. Here's the other thing though, why do I say that most sites really don't need to concern themselves with this? Web servers are so powerful these days, CPUs are getting so powerful 
that for the vast majority of sites, unless you have a huge amount of traffic, it will not have much of an impact, if any impact at all, in terms of your website's performance and the amount of resources that your server uses. But, you know, it's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Again, this is one of these technologies, one of these uh, design patterns, if you will, where you can implement, you just have to be mindful of it. You have to be aware of it so that when you're faced with a situation where you have a very popular website, and you go, oh boy, these pages are starting to really load slow. Then you, if you're aware of static website generators, you'll be able to, to, to at least look at them and say, okay, maybe we could use a website generator, static web page generator, generator, because the load is getting heavy. Then you explore it then. Again, you learn the technology on a need to nerd basis. That's one of the things I keep preaching. And there you go. That is my summary and commentary on the five website development trends at Rock 217. I don't know if I agree with these things, like Angular. As far as I could tell, React was the king. Artificial intelligence all the way. VR, re v virtual reality for sure. The vendors, the companies trying to sell these technologies are pushing it. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Ruby on Rails, I don't know. As far as I understand, adoption is either flatline or going down slowly. For me, if I was doing web stack, I would be doing PHP Laravel. Static website generators, we just talked about that. That's it. We'll talk soon. Oh, yeah, by the way, just let me know if you like me commenting on these uh, technology developments, technology, tr technology trends. I figure uh, my 20-plus uh, years of experience as a developer and my perspective on these might be interesting for some of you. Ciao.